Welcome everybody, Steve here. Today, I'm going to talk about some home maintenance. And what I really want to talk about is things that just get overlooked. And one of the big things that gets overlooked, light switches and plug-ins. People take them for granted. They just think that they're going to work forever. But when you use things thousands of times, eventually something's going to wear out on them and it can start to become a hazard. You can get some arcing, you know, with some of your plugs because it's not working properly. And everyone's got one of those and they know that they have one of those. So I'm going to try and inspire you to fix them because it's really easy to do. This one, if you saw my uh, video, I changed this ceiling fan in that's in behind you. And this dimmer was giving me some issues. And it really hums really, really bad. So I'm just going to put a regular switch in there. I don't need to have a dimmer switch. So we're going to replace this guy. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got a, a plug-in at a job site that I'm going to show you that is actually really faulty. And I'm going to show you how to replace a, 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 a plug-in as well. So stay tuned. First thing we're going to do, got to get the power up. It's not like you can change, well, some electricians change it without with the power on but I don't recommend that I recommend you turn the power off one of the best little tools that you can get is just a tester this just tests whether or not there's a current or not um, I got a couple different ones and I have one that is not as sensitive as this and it's kind of nice because you can actually go around to different wires and uh, see which one is live or not. This one's really sensitive. So I can just you know, hold it out here, press the button in, even if I get close, for some reason it goes off. But that'll tell you whether or not you're live or not. And then when you uh, know you have got no power, then you can uh, change the switch up. So I'm gonna go shut the power off and I may have to do some, I've got a light going here, but it'll probably end up going out. I'll have to make up some sort of a lighting system somehow. But I'll get that all figured out. You know, I'm not a high roller, so I don't have any of that fancy, fancy equipment. So you're going to see a shadow. Don't worry about it. Let's change this. Alright, the first thing I do, take off this plate. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now if it's too tough for you to take off the plate then you should call somebody. Give her a wiggle. Sometimes they get a little stuck on, uh, some people put them on fresh paint. All right, in this particular case here, we have just two wires in the box. So what that tells me is that power is at the light. And then they're just running power down through here and then back to the light or vice versa. So we just have to hook that up to the switch and we're good to go. Just lengthening up this wire here a little bit. Now I like to I like to put a little J in mine, so I'm just using my tool. I give it a half a bend, then I come around and I do it again. It just gives me a really nice little little J there.
Now it's just a simple matter of hooking it up. Now in Canada, we have a Robertson, number one, or you have to use a flat bladed screwdriver for this. This wire here is aluminum, a little bit harder to work with. And if you're using a, if you have to merit a, an aluminum wire, make sure that you, uh, there's a special grease that you put in there. Right up here it says top, so you know which way to go. And we'll just screw it in. Make sure we're kind of straight. That looks good. Okay, we'll go turn the power on. Good to go. Let's move on to the next one. Now in this particular case, this one here is for the dining room, and it works fine. No hum going on there, it's good. But this one's for the kitchen, and it's really, there's a lot of resistance. So I'm gonna change that one out, keep it safe. Now most light switches do not have this ground. This one does. It's probably a little higher end. But if you have the ground, just tuck it back in there. We don't want it touching anything. The ground is important if you were to put a GFI in here someday. We're a long ways away from the water, so not necessary, but some people may want that, so we'll leave it in there.
All right, I'm at the job site and I'm just going to show you on this particular plug here why it's so important to change your plugs out every once in a while. This one here, actually if you move it around, is loose and it's not connecting. And if you're doing some electrical work, it's a really good idea to pick up one of these, just test your uh, circuit, tells you what you've done wrong, and it's perfect. If I put it in this one here, you're still pretty good. For the most part, most people plug in at the top of your uh, uh, at the top of the plug and that's the one that's going to wear out. It's wore out. Don't take a chance on uh, arcing or anything like that. Change them. And as another tip, this is what happens when you glue stuff to your wall. Don't do that. Nail it. Now here's another uh, tester here for GFI. This one's in a bathroom. You plug that in, you see we've got uh, two orange lights on the right, good to go. It's got a little tester here so that you know that this works properly. Now we're not going to change the GFI plug. Um, usually when you change one of these, you've got to really read the instructions and put the wires exactly where they uh, ask you to put them. It's not so bad if there's just one, but if you're going to move on and have two on the same circuit, then you've got to make sure that you get your wires right, so read the instructions. I just don't have a GFI that I'm going to replace, so it might be for another uh, episode. Alright, I showed you this little tester here. Now, we found another plug. Now this will show you everything. It's a little dark in here so you'll be able to see it. It only shows one light in the middle. So if we look, it says open ground. So that means we don't have a ground. That's pretty important on a, on a uh, plug-in. If you've got a wet floor or something like that and you plug something into this, you can get a heck of a good shock. Take it apart and see what's going on. We can also use this tester here to test to make sure our power's out. Not lighting up. We're good. There is a ground wire hooked up here, but it's hooked up to the wrong screw. It's also very, very loose right here. I didn't tighten it down. Wow, that can happen. This really emphasizes why it's important to check your plugs and make sure that they're good. Don't take any chances. Got the ground wire hooked up here. Now, I don't know whether or not we need to change this, but if you had to, it's pretty simple. When they come, they got with both screws kind of out. And if you just have the two wires, remember, white goes on the silver side, black goes on the gold side. And if you have four wires, you have the two whites and the two red or blacks. But if you only have two wires, screw this guy down. You don't need him sticking up so that he could rub up against a, a ground wire or something like that. All right. Give this a whirl here. Let's 
and plug him in. Gonna leave it hanging out, we're safe. We'll go turn the power on and see what happens. Alright, as you can see, still have the same problem. Well, let's change the plug out and see if that makes a difference. And it doesn't matter which terminal you use. All right, in this particular case, I got bigger problems. That means that either that plug or that plug, whichever way the power comes in, I have no ground here. So I've got to do a little searching. That'll be for another day. Hmm, that's not good. Wouldn't have known that if I didn't have this tester. So, Important to go out and grab one of those. All right, I'll put her back together. And let's move on to a kitchen plug. Okay, I'm gonna show you a typical kitchen plug. Now that'd be a lot easier just doing it on the counter here so you can really, really see what's going on. Now, most people don't realize that on your uh, kitchen, plugs. You have two hot wires. The black and the uh, red. This is a three wire system. Nowadays of course they got uh, they just use a heavier gauge and able to just use one breaker but in this particular situation each one has its own separate breaker. So if you were just to hook that up to there and that up to there both of these are connected you'd get a short out because you'd have live here and live here. So what you have to do if you're changing your plug out is there's a little tab right there. You just take your needle nose give her a couple of these And now, <coughs> excuse me, now she's wide open. So this now is separate from this one. Now you only do it on the power side, that's the, uh, the one with the brass screws. Silver side, you have to leave that alone because there's only one white wire and you need to have a neutral on both, uh, on both ends here. After that, now you can just hook her up.
Feel free to screw this guy down. Just like that. Pretty simple. All you have to do is remember to pull that little tab off the power socket. 